Shockingly, Bernie uh, did an interview with the Washington Post today, talk about going into the lion's den. So let me start it uh, showing you a little comical moment. Uh, here's the beginning of it. Bernie uh, <laughs> pointing out the obvious uh, about who was sponsoring this event. Along the way, Senator Sanders has succeeded in making his priorities part of our national conversation, ranging from Medicare for all to regulatory reform of Wall Street. Since launching his 2016 bid for the presidency, the senator's message has encouraged new voters, particularly younger generations of voters, to participate in the electoral process, changing the nature of our political debate. This morning, we'll hear more from Senator Sanders about his domestic policy goals, his approach to the problems posed by Iran and North Korea, and his strategy for winning the Democratic nomination. We're looking forward to a lively discussion before we begin the program, I would like to thank our presenting sponsor, Bank of America. Now, please join me in welcoming Senator Bernie Sanders and The Washington Post's Robert Costa. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Okay. Senator Sanders, thanks so much for being here. Is Bank of America really sponsoring this? I <laughs> Well, let's okay. just get into the interview. <laughs> so there was Bernie uh, giving, it, giving it a little humor. Did Bank of America know who was speaking uh, this morning? And might as well, might as well call it Amazon Washington Post, because, I mean, they do more hit pieces on Bernie Sanders than anybody else. I mean, they got one columnist, Jennifer Rubin, who does about four, um, <laughs> four hit pieces a week. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. So uh, let me show you, I'm gonna start with the part of the interview that I found to be finally Bernie going after Biden. Not, as, not exactly as strong as I would like, but to me, this is, this is the key, key argument Bernie Sanders should be making against Joe Biden because he's not electable in the Midwest. He is not electable in those Midwest states. The corporate media could make it, spin it that he's electable or that he's Union Joe and all this nonsense. Eh, not so much. Here's Bernie Sanders answering a question on Joe Biden and trade. Uh, Joe Biden and trade. Here we go. And millions of good paying jobs leading the world in wind and solar and other sustainable technologies. You brought up China. If you were elected, would you keep the tariffs on China? No, if I were elected, we'd sit down and try to develop trade policies that work for the working people of this country and poor people around the world. It is no secret, and I say this as somebody who helped lead the effort against NAFTA, PNTR, with China and other trade agreements, that these trade agreements were most often written behind closed doors by corporate leaders. And these corporate leaders were making money in this country, prepared to throw workers in this country out on the street because they make more money going to China or go to Mexico. Those are not the trade agreements that I support. Tariffs is one tool, but overall you need a trade, series of trade agreements that work for working people in this country. If there are corporations out there who are making money and they shut down in this country and they want to go abroad for cheap labor and then they line up at the trial for federal contracts, I would say, you know what, before you want the taxpayers to give you a contract, why don't you treat your workers with respect? And by the way, that has to do with health care benefits, that has to do with treating workers with dignity in this country something that corporate America in many instances is not doing. We have a situation today where the CEOs of large corporations make 300 times more than their workers. We have to deal with that. We need, a corp we need to change the corporate culture in America, which is designed for short-term gains, and they are doing very well. Stock market is doing well. Dividends are very high. But maybe start paying attention to the working people of this country and not just to the stock market or dividends. Should Vice President Biden's support for NAFTA years ago give Democrats pause? Well, look. Yes uh, or no? I'll give you a yes or no. Give me, give me two sentences, all right? All right. I think it'll be more than two sentences. It will be. All right. <laughs> He's a good reporter. He got it. All right. I mean, look, is Joe's record something that should be discussed? Is Bernie Sanders' record something that should be discussed? That is what a campaign is about. Do we, should we engage in mudslinging and, and uh, opposition research? It's a research? policy question. Of course it's a policy question. So the answer is yes, but it's not only that. Joe was a strong supporter of uh, NAFTA and PNTR with China. 
How is that going to play in the Midwest, which was decimated? In Michigan, Wisconsin, other states which were decimated by these terrible trade agreements. Do I think that the workers in those states are going to feel very kindly to the guy who supported those agreements? But it's not just trade. Now, let me just briefly you know, talk about some of the differences between uh, Joe and myself. Uh, Joe voted for the war in Iraq. Uh, I did everything that I could. I not only voted against that war, I did everything that I could to see that we did not get into that war, which turned out to be the worst foreign policy blunder in the modern history uh, of this country. Joe voted for the deregulation of Wall Street. I helped lead the effort against that. That led, in my view, to the Wall Street collapse of 2008 uh, and the incredible pain that that caused for the American people. I voted against that bailout. If there was going to be a bailout, I wanted the billionaire class that helped cause the problem to pay for it, not working families. So, you know, the differences between Joe and me on foreign policy, on domestic policy, is pretty significant. More importantly, our vision for the future of this country is, is very different, and voters will end up uh, taking a look at our records, taking a look at our ideas for the future. They will make their decision. What does that tell us about his judgment, especially that Iraq vote? Look, I don't want to, you know, psycho, uh, psychoanalyze Joe and, and uh, determine you know, about his judgment. He was wrong. He was wrong big time. And go back to what I said on the floor of the House. I was a member of Congress about, you know, the destabilization that would occur in uh, the Mideast uh, as a result of that war. And by the way, right now, I am doing everything that I humanly can. I think I'll be in a press conference in a couple of hours to do everything that we can to make sure the United States doesn't get involved in a war with Iran, which, in my view, you can see how this stacks up five years from now, would be an even worse disaster than the war in Iraq. And I want to say something. I know I've been saying a lot. All right, so you want the good or the bad? The good or the bad? I'll start with the good. Finally, finally, uh, Bernie Sanders is, is speaking up to point out Joe Biden's record. The corporate media has been manufacturing consent and, and, and you know, extreme, you know, in 2016, it was extreme makeover Hillary Clinton. Now it's been extreme makeover Joe Biden and, and pushing this notion, this fairy, this fairy dust, fairy tale notion that he's more electable in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and Michigan. I got news for you. I was in Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, as well as Ohio, more than any other state covering uh, 2020, excuse me, 2016. Donald Trump did not win because of Vladimir Putin, didn't win because of James Comey. He had them at NAFTA. And if you look at the exit polls, the exit polls in all of those states, you know, voters tell you what the main issues were. The two top issues were trade and immigration. Trump was very successful at making those workers think their jobs and their plants closed because of Mexicans and, Me and Muslims. No, it was because of the corporations writing these trade deals. The corporations write the trade deals. Yes, cheap labor is going to Mexico and, and China, but you know you can't blame the workers there. It's, it's the government officials that are selling your jobs to the lowest bidder. It's not the workers' fault. You know, Bernie obviously didn't clobber him over the head. I would have preferred him to say, I would have preferred him to say, uh, yeah, his, his vision has been lacking. And, you know, Joe Biden uh, is doing fundraisers with Comcast lobbyists, and Comcast is a union buster. And while he goes out, you know, talking about being union guy Joe, here's all the money he's taking from unions. And NAFTA dis helped destroy unions. So would, T so would TPP which Joe Biden still supports, which Joe Biden still supports. But the bottom line is this, Bernie, that message against Joe Biden on NAFTA and TPP. Remember, I, showed, I reported on this earlier. Joe Biden wrote in 2016 as vice president, he wrote cheeringly about the TPP, just like Hillary Clinton called it the gold standard. But Hillary Clinton called it the gold standard in 2011 while she was secretary of state. Joe Biden was writing glowingly about this in 2016. And he's still for TPP. And if he was president, he would definitely try to reignite TPP. Well, TPP, if, if NAFTA was the first wrecking ball to close down those factories in Ohio, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Illinois, many other states around this country, TPP will be the final one.
You want to talk about a jobless economy? If TPP comes to pass, forget it. And finally, Joe, finally, Bernie Sanders is bringing up the things that he should have brought up in the debate. And he, I hope he brings up in the second debate. I think he could do it a little stronger, you know, when the reporter, who, by the way, if you watch the full thing, uh, let me put the link in the live chat if you want to watch the full thing. I heard some stuff. I heard some things from Bernie a little different than I've heard before, particularly on foreign policy. There's the link. But when the reporter says, is he lacking judgment? You know, maybe a stronger answer than I don't want to psychological psychoanalyze him, this and that. Bernie, enough with the niceties. OK, you're not. Are you planning on going on vacation with Joe and Jill Biden after the campaign? Take the gloves off. Yes, he's lacking judgment. He's lacking judgment to lead. That's what you need to say. I'm not a campaign strategist, but that's what I would like. Hope you enjoyed that last video. Hop on over to statuscoup.com where you can sign up for our email list and become a member for as low as five to ten dollars a month. Membership is how we grow. That's statuscoup.com slash join. And remember, join our email list so we can grow the revolution with you.